Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tran again from uh, DeepMD.net. So last time we spoke about central line um, insertion. Our question for you at that time was which site you going to insert and why? So today we have our special guest. Hello. This is Dr. John Witt. He is an anesthesiology resident. So he will be here to answer a couple of questions for us today. Hello, John. How are you? Doing? Doing? Great. Good Great. to be here. Good to be you. So, okay. So the first question, uh, first question is uh, for you, um, Dr. Witt. Yes, is sir. Which side of entry would you choose? Would you pick uh, ray, IJ, subclavian, or femoral? And can you tell us uh, pro and con for each site? Sure, those are, those are obviously the three most common sites. I think that uh, for both students and doctors, uh, you'll, you'll find that the most common site used in uh, ICU now and ORs are the, uh, generally the right IJ, the right internal jugular in the neck. Um, for a multitude of reasons, but uh, as Dr. Tran reflected, there are pros and cons, and I think that we could probably systematically discuss those. Yes. So to start with, we'll start with the femoral vein. Um, this, is a, this is a vessel that's uh, accessed in the groin, um, mm -hmm. and uh, as far as advantages and disadvantages, there are four of each that we'll concentrate on secondary to our evidence-based medicine approach. Uh, the first of which is from a technical standpoint, the femoral vein uh, is probably the easiest to access with someone with limited experience. So that's certainly uh, worthy of consideration. Secondarily, um, the site is such that the anatomical architecture is very conducive to compression. Uh, if you have to discontinue the procedure or in the event of a hemorrhage or something of that nature, that it's a very compressible site. Uh, tertiarily, um, there's no risk of pneumothorax or hemothorax in that area, which can't be said for the other two sites. That's very true. I, I don't believe we have any lung down there, right? Uh, no, no, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we do have a hip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, and finally, um, visualization under ultrasound of that vessel is usually not a problem. In certain cases, surprisingly, people with advanced vasculopathy, it can present a problem, but if it presents a problem in that location, the other two locations will probably be excluded. Okay. As far as advantages, um, excuse me, disadvantages, um, there are also four that we need to consider. Um, because of the proximity, uh, certainly, to the femoral artery, there is always a possibility of puncture and or even cannulation of the femoral artery, which is something that we certainly want to avoid in central uh, venous line placement. Um, there's also, it's been shown to be a higher instance of uh, thrombosis uh, okay. at that location. Also, uh, related to such, there's a higher incidence of infection, uh, certainly versus the sub uh, subclavicular site. Um, the final thing to keep in mind is just by the very nature of the location, it does limit patient mobility uh, slightly, uh, especially with uh, heavier patients. Um, there's also a risk of with movement actually occluding uh, the lumen uh, of the catheter. So those are the, those are the uh, four pros and cons with regard to femoral. Uh, moving on, on into the internal jugular, um, which as I've mentioned before is the most common site that uh, you'll see introduction. Um, the two uh, advocates for this approach are that one, uh, the internal jugular vein is, is usually very easily visualized under ultrasonography. I uh, should mention that, that currently in the United States, standard of practice does involve the use of ultrasound with all yes. central line insertions. Yes. Okay, secondarily, as we mentioned with the femoral, uh, because of the anatomic location, it lends itself well to compressibility uh, if direct pressure needs to be applied for uh, uh, hemostasis. Uh, as far as uh, things speaking against this location, there's a risk of carotid puncture, certainly. Um, Definitely. The bane of all residents. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you certainly need to locate the, the carotid artery and mm -hmm. steer clear of that under ultrasound. Yep. Um, secondarily, it poses some risk of, uh, of hemal and pneumothorax mm -hmm. at this location, although not quite as much as uh, the subclavian. Um, and finally, uh, the rate of infection at the IJ is slightly enhanced above the subclavian side also. So as we're speaking about the subclavian, we'll move uh, directly into a discussion of that, pros and cons. Okay. Uh, as far as advantages to the subclavian side, 
It's got the lowest rate of infection at the other two sites combined. It also has a lower rate, a lowest rate of catheter-associated thrombosis. As far as cons, these are considerable. Um, it does present the highest rate of hemo and pneumothorax or pneumological complication. Which it makes sense, right? Because yes. Because the lung just may be high, the subclavian. Absolutely. And also because it's, it's directly under uh, the clavicle, mm -hmm. it's also the hardest site to visualize with ultrasonography as far as to, to visualize the vessel, mm -hmm. one. Two, because of the rigid nature of the anatomy in that area, it's also the most difficult to compress. Yes. So, um, thank you very much for telling us pro and cons. Yes. Um, so, regarding the method and result of the randomized control trial, when they compare the femoral versus subclavian catheterization, um, so how would you comment on that study? What are the key findings in this study when yes. they compare between femoral and subclavian? Right, and uh, referring back to Mirror et al., which okay. is the, the study that we're utilizing for the uh, for this discussion. There were three findings um, that are significant. Um, the first of which being that there doesn't appear to be a, a statistically uh, significant difference in technical uh, challenge or mechanical complications, one or the other, same thing. So similar in both groups, basically. In, in, in both uh, subclavian and femoral insertion. Mm -hmm. uh, where there's a divergence is it's been shown um, both with thrombotic events and catheter-related infections, that the subclavian site is superior um, to the femoral site, which is to say there are less of both. Okay. So for the subclavian, low infection, lower rate. Absolutely. And also lower rate of thrombosis. Yes. Okay. So those are the key things. So um, which factors do you think that have been associated with increased risk of mechanical complication from those insertion? Um, yes. Uh, and, Overwhelmingly, it's been shown that uh, operator inexperience mm -hmm. is, is the, the single most, uh, most important factor. Um, when choosing these sites, you have to be cognizant of your own level of, of proficiency and experience. Um, so there are two, there's a bifurcation, there are two ways to look at this. One, patient centristic, um, centrific, excuse me, uh, focused uh, motivators and operator experience or comfort. As far as patient uh, centrific uh, motivators, uh, the first of which you would consider is the morphology or the habitus of the patient. For example, if you were to consider a femoral line insertion, uh, but your patient was morbidly obese, as you might imagine because of the distribution of the adipose tissue, mm -hmm. um, that would be challenging in a couple of different ways. Uh, first, to access the vessel. Uh, secondarily, to effectively apply compression if need be. So probably not there. Uh, another example is someone that is respiratorily compromised. Mm -hmm. Say someone with acute uh, hypoxic respiratory failure has very little pulmonary reserve. You would probably be a little resident to employ uh, the subclavian uh, mm -hmm. location, for example, of the, with the risk of uh, pneumothorax and uh, the risks that would pose to the patient. Um, so, so those are uh, uh, some factors. Um, so you have to balance those against your comfort level in different sure. locations. Also worthy of mention are a few other uh, things that, uh, that evidence-based practices showed us, uh, shown us. Number one, um, emergent uh, administrations or introductions have a much lower rate of success. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, you don't have enough time to get yourself organized, get everything laid, lined out, and to have backup. Mm -hmm. uh, um, also, Another thing that's been shown are the same situation with uh, night uh, procedures. Yeah. Because you have mainly residents, people with, with less experience yeah. uh, and backup conducting the procedures. Um, finally, uh, and in my, my opinion probably most important, um, is to remember the three strikes you're out rule. Um, after three tries, mm -hmm. it is uh, best to do one of two things. If you haven't been successful after your third try, you certainly hand it off uh, to another uh, practitioner, uh, maybe one that's more experienced, or you discontinue the procedure because uh, the literature shows us that after three attempts with unsuccess, uh, the odds go way down mm -hmm. um, for a good patient outcome. Good. So, so as Dr. Witt just mentioned, so those are the factors that are associated with increased risk of mechanical complications. So the question for you now, 
is there anything that you can do to prevent mechanical complication? And then we come back with Dr. Witt again, and he give us some tip on how to prevent uh, mechanical complications. Okay?